my latest modelling project is something that I've been having to think about for a few weeks trying to figure out how I was going to do it and in the end I just went for it and made it up as I went along um, and I'm reasonably happy with how it's turned out uh, with a few caveats which I'll talk about as I go through so basically I wanted some woods for 6 mil wargaming and for particular for my Wars of the Roses game where I don't need troops to pass through the woods necessarily but I do want to have a nice representation of a larger patch of woods rather than individual trees um, and what I particularly wanted was I wanted to be able to see tree stumps sticking out the bottom so a little, you know, a little bit more realistic with a nice canopy of leaves over the top now this hasn't finished and completely finished drying which is why it looks a little bit misty white in the middle but it will uh, when it's going to take a few days to dry fully with the method that I've chosen to do uh, which I'll explain in a mo um, but when it's done I think it's going to look it's going to look really nice and so I wanted to talk through what the process was um, because I'm going to make another one basically so I put that there um, and I'm, I started off with a uh, MDF base, I got these from more bases, you know, irregular sizes, that one was a nice oval shape, uh, I wanted something a little bit more irregular, um, I don't need them to be massive for the particular scenario that I want and the terrain that I wanted, I just want some reasonably, reasonable size but nonetheless smallish uh, patches of woods that I can use for my 6mm gaming, this specifically for my 6mm gaming, I'm not sure this method would scale up because of the amount of material uh, required but I'll get to that in a moment. So the the MDF base is the start, and the canopy is made up of Brillo pad, basically, a, you know, like kitchen scouring pad. Uh, it, in this case, all I've done is I've basically cut out a shape that fits, that matches the mat, the, the wood underneath. Um, in this case. I think the corner there is a, a strip I had to stick on because the Brillo pad wasn't quite, uh, or the scouring pad wasn't quite big enough, but whatever. So what we end up with is the, the underside of the canopy, so it will be slightly above the base, um, so it will stand just slightly above the base there. Um, that's what the foliage material was going to sit on top of, but the end result, the way that I've built this, is going to be extremely solid. Um, and we'll take some bashing around and transporting without falling apart um, and looks reasonably realistic I think you know, certainly looks good enough Had it's achieved what I wanted from the project so looking at the other example you can see I have tree trunks in there um, and that's a relatively simple thing it's basically a set of tooth, uh, toothpicks you could use any other material that you wanted but essentially I started off with some toothpicks I cut them to about three centimeters long um, and then I will drill a load of holes in the base and mount the toothpicks in them and then I will glue the whole base and cover it in my turf type flock material that, that um, I've used on a lot of my other projects um, and that will not only stick the turf down and cover the base, but it will also glue in all of the uh, tree trunks. So now that all the pins are in, we now need to make sure they're all at exactly the same height so that when we put the canopy on it sits nice and is supported on the tree trunks here. And for that, I'm, all I'm doing is I'm using a, a lollipop stick to get the same consistent height, trim them off, sorry, bits ping in everywhere, but that way I end up with all of the tree trunks at the same height. So I've now painted all of the trunks using a, just a real cheap uh, art acrylic that I got from a, a cheap store. Um, that was only like two pound, a, a big tube like that. Um, I use this on a lot of terrain. I quite like this as a, as a base color and it certainly does for the, for the tree trunks. And then I've just painted the edge of the base and now I'm ready to apply some of the uh, WWS basing glue. Um, I'm going to put that all over and then put my usual turf mix on there which is a mix of two different types of uh, uh, basing turf uh, with a few flecks of other colours in um, and that will just give a nice grassy base. So the base has now been uh, covered in the turf and I've added some bushes and a few flowers around the edge where they might be seen when you're looking into the forest. Um, they're a bit funny colours because they're soaked in the 
uh, basing glue and they'll dry out completely clear so they'll return to their normal colour when they've dried fully because I've literally just done this bit. So, but now we can actually put this bit aside and concentrate on the next stage which is turning this piece of scouring pad into the canopy of the forest. Um, and we're not going to do all of it in one go. What I'm going to do is I'm going to work on the edges and get it ready to plonk, to glue on top of the, the uh, trunks of the trees and then we put the top canopy on top of this. Um, but for the moment what I'm going to concentrate on doing is, is covering up these edges. So what I'll be doing, I'll, I'll be painting some basing glue on and adding some of my turf just so it's got a nice gets rid of that green texture and a little bit around the edge on the ins on the underside but don't have to go all the way in because obviously you can't get to see that um, so just enough so that you know when you're looking in you're not seeing brillo you're not seeing pad the scouring pad you're seeing uh, the turf grassy stuff just around the edges on the underside We're going to glue the canopy to the tops of the tree trunks. Now, last time I used some uh, Yoohoo type glue, didn't really like it, far too stringy. I don't like using it, but it, I, I gave it a try. It worked fine, um, it probably produced a nice and strong result, but this time I'm just going to use some of the, the basing glue because um, there's lots more, there's more trunks this time, some more points of contact for the uh, canopy to glue down so I think that the basing glue will be sufficient so I'll make sure there's a dob of the glue on the top of every tree trunk and then I'm just going to take this is still a little bit damp but I'm going to put the canopy on top and I want to try and get it roughly level so it matches it echoes the base underneath it and then I'm just going to leave it so this is dried now overnight um, it's, you know, it's all dry all the way through. I put it out and it's dried. It takes a while to dry because I soaked so much of the glue on it, but nonetheless, it's dried, it's nice and firm. Um, it's all ready now to start putting the canopy on. And incidentally, um, the, the other piece, when I showed it to you earlier, it was still looking a little bit cloudy because some of the glue had yet to dry. As you can see, it's just dried. And now it looks nice, it looks like a proper canopy. Um, so, you know, that one is pretty much dry. I'm still going to leave it out a little bit longer. You know, I won't put it, box it up or anything just yet. I'll leave it out for a few more days just to make sure that it is thoroughly dried right to the core, the heart of all of that foam. But, you know, it looks like it's more than it's finished. So that's, that's done. So I'm going to put that one to one side. Um, I'll say I'll leave it out for a few more days. So now we're going to move on and do this one. And what I'm going to do first is when I've done the previous one, I put all of the, the canopy on in the middle and then worried about the edges. I'm going to do it the other way around this time. I'm going to stick stuff around the edges to cover this quite obviously square um, uh, edge. So I'm going to cover that up, but it will also create a little lip, if you like, uh, a bowl in which to put the rest of the material. Um, and the reason I flocked all the way across the top of this, or put the, 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 um, the turf material across all the top of this, is because there will be gaps in between the foliage um, where you can see, I didn't want to see scab basically. So, uh, you know, it doesn't take much to put that on there. But as I say, now that that's foliage dry, we can move on to the next stage, which is adding the canopy. So the next step, as I say, is to uh, put some materials around the edges and I'm just going to use super glue and attach it and uh, then we will put some of the basing glue on afterwards once it's all dried just to sort of firm everything up. Um, incidentally, if at any point during the video and you, you hear what sounds like World War Three taking place outside, hence the, the noises, um, it's November the 5th uh, as I film this, so yeah, um, the neighbours all around me seem to be intent on spaffing hundreds of thousands of pounds worth of fireworks up the wall um, as we used to do when our kids were young um, and as no doubt we'll do when the grandkids get older but um, yeah so it sounds a bit noisy outside do they not know I'm trying to record in here um, <laughs> so if you hear noises and explosions don't panic it's just November the 5th so right I'm gonna proceed and I'm gonna um, stick some stuff along the, the edges and just manually place pieces on 
all the way around the edge so that you end up with a bit of a lip. And the idea is, is that eventually the canopy will stick out just slightly bigger than the base. So just a bit of super glue, a little bit at a time, and then manually place the uh, clump foliage around here. It sticks pretty much instantly, um, so it's, it's a pretty easy. You just got to be careful, try not to keep getting it on your fingers, but it should go on. I, when I do it, it seems to go on fairly evenly. I have chosen to use scouring pad as my base material for the canopy. You could use anything else. I just found that it was rigid, so it produces a nice solid uh, base on which to put the rest of the canopy and it's, it's just part of that process of trying to make uh, a piece of terrain that's going to stand up to being manhandled um, and, and, and used you know I don't want my terrain falling apart first use so I'm, I'm obviously I'm making it to, to as durable as I can um, which is why I soak a lot of it in the uh, basin glue afterwards because when that sets it just holds all of it together and you're not going to end up with pieces coming off of it. So there you have it, I put a ring of foliage around the edge and now I'm going to do the foliage in the centre. Instantly it suddenly occurred to me while I was doing that, I've just blithely said ignore the gun, the, 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 uh, the fireworks going off outside because it's November the 5th because I do have international viewers who may not have a clue what I'm talking about. So. Um, if you don't know it, um, November the 5th, 1605, there was a Catholic plot to blow up the Houses of Parliament um, with, while well, the King was there, um, uh, so basically they were taken out all of the noteworthies in the government and the King um, and various other notable people. Um, the plot was, no, as you may have guessed, uh, uncovered and uh, Guy Fawkes was tortured the man who was the who was actually laying the, the gunpowder he was captured and he was tortured and uh, a load of conspirators were rounded up I won't go into any more detail than that what I'd say is if you're interested go on go online have a little look look up the gunpowder plot Guy Fawkes um, and you'll learn all about it uh, obviously for my UK viewers you know all about this already anyway back on with the project so I've now got a pot of um, camp foliage. I'm going to mix in some more of the basin glue. Um, I'll mix it in with a stick um, until everything is thoroughly saturated in the basin glue. I won't put too much in. I put too much in when I've done the first one. It took a lot longer to dry than it really ought to have. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'll just put enough so that it coats everything and then I can put all of the camp foliage, break it up and cover that flat area there to make the canopy. and then. Uh, as it dries I might add the odd little piece here and there just to give a little bit of an uneven surface to it but that essentially is it so what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix the stuff in I'll put the, the, the foliage on and you can see what I've done once I've finished here we are, that's nearly all mixed in I think that's pretty much done you can see it's not soaking wet but it is thoroughly soaked in the glue it's gone because I've given it a thoroughly good stir I put some in the bottom of the pot and poured some on top of the foliage and gave it all a big stir and it's it's soaked into the fabric of the, the clump foliage and all on the outside and now I'm ready to place this stuff on the canopy on this flat area of the of the, the forest um, and you know nothing no great art to this it's just put it on spread it out um, and then leave it to dry because it's going to take a long time to dry um, now, yes, this is a lot of glue and a lot of clump foliage, but the end result is a, a model that is going to last quite a long time because um, it's going to be, you know, thoroughly, the glue holds it all together and it, it will take, when I've made similar things like this in the past, it's, it, it, it ends up being rigid enough, not, not too rigid, but rigid enough that it will hold together even when you're, handling it a lot for um, games and shows and things like that so in other words this is a piece of terrain that hopefully will serve um, me for many years it's, i've done it exclusively the size that i've done is exclusively for my six mil war games but of course it could be any period um uh, i'm doing this for my wars of the roses games but you know this this piece of terrain will probably serve me for many different periods that i'm playing i do a lot of ancients war gaming in six mil um, so no doubt it will 
serve me for that as well. Looks like I've probably overdone it slightly with the cump foliage or too much of it, but um, it doesn't hurt if there's bits that stick up taller than the others. And that essentially is it. I'm going to leave this to dry a little bit. Um, the last step, really, um, is before it dries and while everything is still this damp, I put a little bit of the basing glue on this edge that I glued on with the super glue, and then I'll give a scattering of my um, turf material. So if I show you that, it's a mix of dark and light turf, and I've got some flecks of yellow and white in there to, for flowers. Um, I use it for base you know the, the the groundwork on bases um, in this case I'm just going to sprinkle a tiny amount on top of the trees um, and you know it just blends everything in and I and makes it match in with the uh, the stuff that I've put on the actual scourer which is the base of the, the canopy um, I might as well use all of these pieces it doesn't matter like I say if bits stick up but the end result after a day or two of drawing, because it's going to take a while, that other piece, the original one that I've done, um, has taken a couple of days to dry. But you know, once you've done it, put it on the side, it'll be ready in a few days' time. Can't rush a good piece of terrain. So, there you go. I'm going to just sprinkle a little bit, just a tiny amount of the turf on the top, not too, too much, just enough. To give a little bit of a softens the edges out, and I'm going to leave this until this is dried, and then I'll, the la very, very last stage is to brush on some more of the uh, basing glue um, just to cover the edges because obviously they're they're not as adhered on as this stuff will be when it dries. And that's it. I'm going to leave this now, a couple of days time, and then hopefully I can come back and I can show you the finished result. And as I say, with my original one. Move this aside. And two blue pleat as well. Here's one I prepared earlier. Um, you know, it's it's pretty solid, but it's not rock hard. Um, but solid enough that it's not going to fall apart. Um, and you know, that was my prototype. This is the me, me part, part B, me, me second version. Um, I I only need two for what I want. But I might, you know, I could do some more. I might use this method in future. Um, as I say, I've you gone through a lot of pump foliage and a lot of glue so I need to restock now before I do any other projects but what I'll do is I'm going to leave this to to dry for the next couple of days and then I will come back to it and show you what it all looks like once it's finished so here we are it's a couple of days later and these are thoroughly dried as you can see there's no none of that cloudy milkiness that you could see when I showed you this one originally because they've dried thoroughly through the, the, the glue is now fully dried I just left them out um, uh, near radiator so they've dried thoroughly and they're, they're nice and tough now so you know they're, they're quite tough they're going to hand up to stand up to a bit of handling and I suppose you could um, take this method and do it for slightly larger scales although of course you then have to contend with a lot more raw materials being used but for my purpose six mil wargaming where I just needed some woods impenetrable dense woodland units aren't going to move through these otherwise I would have canopies that could be removed because you could make them and then not stick the canopies on so that you can take them off um, uh, to move troops through um, I've just done these as glued on because for the particular rules that I'm using and the scale that I'm using I don't need to move troops through these this is going to be dense woodland impenetrable um, but I still wanted that to be able to see see through the tree trunks just because I wanted to um, so there you go so that's my little project to make some dense woodland um, please let me know what you think um, comments suggestions alternatives I'd love to hear from you um, see and I'd love to know what you think of my uh, dense woodland terrain that I've made